Students, in this video I'm going to show you how to add and subtract algebraic fractions. In addition to that, I started with an arithmetic example to give you a basic uh, review of how you do add and subtract fractions. The key to all of this is factoring, so you need to make sure your factoring skills are really in good shape before attempting any problems on this video. To learn how to add and subtract fractions, I'd like to start actually with an arithmetic example. In this case, I have 11 28ths minus 4 21sts plus 5 24ths. Now the first thing you always need to do is factor. So I've gone ahead, worked ahead, and I've taken the liberty of showing you the factors of 28, the factors of 21, and the factors of 24. And now the key will be to come up with a common denominator that has just the right number of factors without any extra. So, I need something that 28 will to divide into. That, needs to, that means that I need to have a 2, a 2, and a 7. Because if it doesn't have those three factors, then 28 will not divide into it. For 21 to divide into this, this denominator needs to have a 3 and a 7. Well, I've got the 7, but I'm going to have to add on a 3. And finally, for 24, I need to have 1, 2, 3, 2's, and a 3. Well, I only have 1, 2, 2's, so I'll have to add an extra 2, and I already have my 3. So my least common denominator would be 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 7, or 168. So 168 will be my common denominator. Now, I've rewritten these fractions. But notice that I've made the substitution. I've put down the factored form for each one of these denominators. Now remember, all my denominators have to have all of those factors. This first denominator has a 2, a 2, and a 7. Well, that means it's missing the 2 and the 3, so I'm going to go ahead and tack on the 2 and the 3. But of course, if I can't just put those on the bottom, I also have to multiply the top by those factors as well. My next one, I have the 3 and the 7, but I'm missing the 2, 2, 2. So I'll stick the 2, 2, 2 on the front, but again, I'll have to put those on the top as well. And finally, my last one has the 2, 2, 2, 3, but it's missing that final 7, so I have to tack on a 7. Now the denominators are all identical, 2, 2, 2, 3, 7 in every case, so they're all 168. We'll have to do a little arithmetic here for our numerators. 2 times 3 is 6, times 11 is 66. 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 4 is 32, and 5 times 7 is 35. So now let's go ahead and do our addition and subtraction. 66 minus 32 is 34. 34 plus 35 is 69. Now normally, you're done. But I always want you to check to make sure that the fraction won't reduce. And in this case, it does. Or of course, I wouldn't be pointing it out in this video. Let's take a look at it. Let's go ahead and factor again. The 69 actually equals 2 times 23. And of course, I already had the denominator factored, the 168. We know what that factors into. And you'll notice I have a common factor of 3, top and bottom. Well, that's 3 over 3. That's 1. And remember, 1 is nothing when you're multiplying and dividing. So you can just cancel the common factors. The only thing I have left with on the top, then, is a 23. In the denominator, I have a 2 times 2 times 2 times 7 is 56. Let's take a look at our second example, which is a more algebraic example. Again, I'm going to do addition and subtraction. Specifically, this time, actually, both of them are subtraction. Because there's a trick that I want you to see. I want you to see how to deal with subtraction. Because, frankly, when you're doing these fractions, in, in the algebra fractions, the algebraic fractions, you never actually want to subtract. You always want to make those addition. So first of all, let's take a look here. And I want you to notice that the second fraction had a problem with it to begin with. It was not in descending order. The negative 6x should be the first term. The other two terms were fine, but this middle one, this was the issue, and now it's fixed. Now you'll notice that when you have a negative fraction, let's say for example negative two-thirds. You need to realize that that could be written as negative two over three or it could be written as two over negative three. These are all three identical. 
they all have a two over three top and bottom, or a two over three, excuse me, two on top, three on bottom. That means you basically, if you convert it to a decimal, have a 0.6 repeating no matter what. All three examples have exactly one negative, so all three have the same value, negative 0.6 repeating. So they're all three equivalent, and that's important because, remember, I want to get rid of these negatives that are in front of the fraction. I want to convert those to addition. So I have a choice now whether to take that negative and put it in the top, or take that negative and put it in the bottom. Well, in this first example, I want you to notice that my first term is negative. I never want that to occur. The easy way to fix that, then, would be to go ahead, make this an addition, and then distribute that negative through my denominator. This second one, I also want to make addition, but I'll simply move that negative up into the top because the denominator is just the way I want it. Distributing that negative, by the way, gives me a positive 6x and a negative 18. You merely reverse the signs. Switch the signs, in other words. If it was negative, it becomes positive. If it was positive, it becomes a negative. We've talked about that issue in class. So now I'm ready to proceed. The next thing I want to do is I want to factor the denominators. And there are my denominators in factored form. Now what I need to do, as I did on the arithmetic example, was find my common denominator. Well, for this number, or this algebraic expression actually, to divide into this denominator, I will need to have both of those denominators. Now, these numbers are a lot easier to deal with than what the numbers were on the last example. You need to essentially find a number that both 6 and 4 will go into. Honestly, most of you are pretty sharp. You just look at that and you probably know it's 12. If you're comfortable with that, please feel free to skip that step. But you could, again, break down that 6 into a 2 times 3. And, of course, you'd still have your x minus 3. And I could break down that 4 into a 2 times 2. And, of course, I'd have an x plus 3. I now to have, need to have all three of these variables in my denominator, or all three of these pieces, if you will. I've got the x minus 3. That's not the problem. I need to have the 2 and the 3, though, so I'll have to add those on. Now, again, I'll need all three of these pieces, all three of these factors, to be present in my common denominator as well. Well, I've got the x plus 3, but I don't have the 2 times 2. I only have one 2, so I'll have to add on that second 2, and I now have my denominator. And you'll notice that this is still as we predicted. 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12. So I now have my common denominator. 12 times x minus 3 times x plus 3. And let's go ahead and take a look. I can't simply, by the way, just have a 12 in the denominator. As a matter of fact, let me back up a step and show you how I got that. I got to put a 12 on the bottom, so I have to put a 12 on the top. On the second one, I need to have that 12, x plus 3, x minus 3. Well, I've got the x minus 3, but I'm going to have to tack on an x plus 3. But again, I'll have to put it on the top as well. And again, what do I have to multiply the 6 by to get 12? And of course, that's a 2. Now, you could have left that and accomplished the same thing in factored form, but I think when the numbers are this small, it's just as easy to do the arithmetic. Okay, let's look at our next one. I've got the x plus 3, but I'm missing the x minus 3. And finally, what do I have to multiply 4 by in order to get 12? And that answer is 3. So I'll multiply top and bottom by 3. And I now have this kind of situation. And I'm hoping at this point you can see where I got all those numbers from. Let's go ahead and do a little arithmetic and simplify this. First of all, 12x is 12x. There's nothing to do on that one. Here we have 5 times 2 is 10, times x would be 10x. 10 times 3 is 30. Negative 2 times 3 would be negative 6, times x is negative 6x. And negative 6 times negative 3 is positive 18. Let's combine our like terms now. 12x and 10x is 22, minus 6x is 16x. 
and 30 plus 18 is 48. So we have a 16x plus 48. I'm going to go ahead and leave the denominator in factored form this time because once again you always want to check to see if the final fraction will indeed reduce. Let's take a look again. We look for the common factor here. That's the only way the numerator will factor. And I hope you notice that there's a 16 common to both terms, which I will factor out. And that leaves me with 16 times x plus 3. Well, now let's take a look at the top and bottom. We've got an x plus 3 in the numerator, an x plus 3 in the denominator. I can also reduce my 12 over 16 to 4 over 3. So on top, I have only a 4 left. In the denominator, I have a 3 times x minus 3. Now, truth be told, I suppose you could leave it in this form, but I always like it if there's any simple algebra or any arithmetic. I always like you to do that. So I distribute that 3 through the parentheses, and I come up with 4 over 3x minus 9, and that is my final solution.